Hey everybody, welcome to Improv FAQ. I'm James Quesada, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about being a supportive player. What does it really mean to support your scene partner? How to become a more supportive player? And we'll also talk about the balance between being supportive and being supported by others. So let's talk about what it means to be supportive. Being supportive means accepting and building on other people's ideas, or yes, anding your scene partners. And in order to really understand the meaning of support, we're gonna take a closer look at those first three concepts, accepting, building, and other people's ideas. Let's say your scene partner starts a scene by saying, I've had it up to here with this job, let's organize a strike. Accepting means believing everything at face value, as far as you understand what's being said. If I heard, I've had it up to here with this job, let's organize a strike, I'll take it to be true that this person is upset, that they're upset because of their job, and they said, let's organize a strike, so I guess it's our job. And it sounds like organizing a strike is a thing that we can do, and that's what they want to do. I accept all of that. Now, you might take more or less information away from that live on stage in the moment. Maybe it didn't quite register with you that they said, let's organize a strike, which would imply that you work at the same place. Or maybe you know a bit more than I do about job strikes and you can assume more truths about this person's job. The understanding of what was said might change from person to person, but acceptance still means believing it at face value. What I won't do is try to consciously twist the reality of anything that was being said or find loopholes by thinking, oh, well, maybe they're lying about being upset or maybe it's actually volunteer work or I don't really work here. <laughs> Those things are all possible, but in this hypothetical, there's really nothing to suggest those things based solely on what was said. Building on it is basically gonna mean answering the questions that come to mind and answering them in a way that makes sense with what you know so far. When I hear, I've had it up to here with this job, let's organize a strike, my, go my mind goes to, well, okay, what is this job? And what's going on that makes this person so upset? So I might say something like, you're damn right, Rick. We need better safety equipment before someone else loses a finger to that circular saw. Or, I'm with you, Rick, they can't run the lumber mill without us. The one thing for certain is that that character's name is Rick. And in one case, I added that the problem with our job is that we don't have adequate safety gear and that people have lost fingers. And in the other case, I added that we work at a lumber mill. And I know I'm riffing on my own ideas here, but the reason I went with those two options is because this sort of gruff delivery in the first line would make me feel like these are hands-on physical laborers. And that's also what I think of when I hear strike. And again, there are tons of ways to build on that first sentence, which will vary from person to person. Maybe you got more of a teacher's strike vibe. Maybe it seemed less urgent than people losing fingers to power saws, or maybe you thought that the person's name was anything but Rick. What matters most when it comes to the idea of support is that whatever you're adding is honestly inspired by what you've accepted to be true. If you're throwing in curveballs or unrelated information, it's just not as helpful in terms of supporting the other person's ideas. Which brings us to the third element of what it means to support other people's ideas. Here's where the real essence of support comes into play, because now we're talking about you and the other person on stage. What's going on beneath the surface of the scene? Support is only as strong as your connection with the other person on stage and your desire to be influenced by them. Are you available to your scene partner? Are you responsive to the things that they're saying and doing? Are you playing with the intention to honor the things that they have in mind? Going back to our opening line of dialogue, I've had it up to here with this job. Let's organize a strike. We talked about accepting what's being said at face value and building on what we've accepted to be true. And that third special ingredient is trying to read into your scene partner's intentions. Let's say that your response to that line of dialogue is, 
Well, now come on, Rick. We all know that the network doesn't pay us enough for writing these scripts, but we've got to pick our battles here. That is supportive. It accepts the truth of things and builds on it by adding that we work as writers for network television and we're not getting paid enough. But you got to ask yourself, did it seem like that's what your scene partner was going for? Did it seem like they were thinking TV writers in the way that they were playing their character? Maybe. And in this case, the move was also to be apprehensive about going on strike. That might play as well as any other move, but in terms of support, did it seem like your scene partner was intending to rally the troops and get everyone on board for a strike? If so, then the more supportive move would be to play into their intention. Of course, you can't know what your scene partner's intentions are for certain. You might be absolutely convinced that they were obviously going for physical laborers and find out that, yeah, they were going for TV writers this whole time. Or maybe they didn't have anything in mind at all beyond what they said. The point is not to be 100% accurate in reading your partner's intentions. It's to make an honest effort to read them. Your scene partner will feel the difference and they'll feel supported even if you were way off in the content of the scene. You also have to learn the people you're playing with and build chemistry. People like to be supported in different ways. Some people don't give a crap if you honor what they had in mind, and they feel supported just so long as you are making bold moves. Other people really try to broadcast their intentions and give cues and hints and offer games. The more you play with people, the more you'll learn what they need and what they don't need in order to feel supported. But all things being equal, accepting and building on other people's ideas is the best way to be supportive. And what about you? Don't you deserve to be supported too? How do you make sure that you are being supported if you're focusing all of your attention on supporting other people? If you feel like you do a great job supporting your partners, but you don't always feel the same level of support in return, my advice is to take more risks, make bigger moves, put yourself out there. Your partners are more likely to support you when you need support. If you're feeling unsupported by the people you're playing with, it might be a matter of giving them more opportunities to support you so they can build supportive instincts and habits with you. If you make bold, risky, vulnerable moves all the time and the people you play with still aren't supporting you, then you either need to have a conversation about support with those people find some different people to play with, or maybe consider whether you are being as supportive as you think you are to them. That's it for this episode. I hope that you found it valuable. And if you did, give this video a like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can also drop a follow-up question in the comments uh, if you have follow-up questions on the idea of being supportive. Or you can comment with a suggestion of another question that you would like to have answered on Improv FAQ.